Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. You've all heard the expression, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. In case it slipped your mind, a fellow by the name of Virgil said that some 2,000 years ago. But as far as George Valentine is concerned, he could just as well said it today. Want to know why? Well, suppose you listen to our Let George Do It adventure entitled, Deal Me Out, and I'll deal you in. Dear Mr. Valentines, now is your chance to be rich. I am a stranger in town and you should take me. Percentage, cost plus, trade commission of the goods, I will pay whatever you like, whatever. And why? Because five private detectives I am hiring. With what? No satisfactions. Mr. Valentines, a young friend of mine is having a most desperate situation. And if you can give satisfactions, then I deal you in. The riches are yours. Knowing you like that sort of thing, I remain as ever yours, Ambrose Acropolis. Knowing you like that sort of thing? For the young lady, yes. Money will mean something beautiful. For a man, it is different. To him, it is only like bread and butter, or blood, maybe. Okay, philosopher, but you still haven't told me what kind of trouble this friend of yours is in. Now, isn't that foolish... Would I need you if I knew? Yeah, but I am still... in town to visit. I am a happy man. I like other people to be happy. How should I know? He won't see me. He is afraid. He avoids his friends. He runs around in alleys with his coat pulled up and his mouth full of mumbling. It sounds a little peculiar. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not misconceive. A nicer, sweeter, more innocent boy could not be imagined. In other places, we have spent many happy evenings together. But something has happened to suddenly change him. Why? What? <laughs> I would not be a friend if, it, if I did not cock my ear to the ground and scratch my head, would I? Contortionist, huh? Okay, what's his name? I, uh, uh, I have his picture here. And the name is like a haircut. Bob. Sprague. Sprague is his last name. And you can remember that by a spray of parcel. Never mind, I got it. Bob Sprague. Now, uh, where do I find this poor man in trouble? Oh, no, no, he's not poor. Oh, my, no, no, indeed. Oh, rich like you are? I'll bet he doesn't wear such pretty spats or striped pants. <laughs> you like them, eh? So do I. I always wear... You are laughing at me. Oh, no, no, really. No, 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 not you, lady. You, sport. You think I'm lying, perhaps, eh? You think I would not know a trouble what I saw? Take it easy. I didn't say anything. Ambrose like Acropolis will show you what he means. When in doubt, delay a hand of Jack's or bet. Hey, let go. What is... Come on. Goodbye, young lady. But, Mr. Acropolis... So, me, I will deal you in with Jackson, Jackson, Higby, and whoever. Let a whole quartet of lawyers convince you. But, Mr. Jackson, the name Bob Sprague means something to you, doesn't it? Oh, just the nephew of a friend of mine, that's all. Why? Why? I will take over here to the explanations how it began. There is something wrong about this boy, and it is only my desire to contact him. Yes, yes, of course. But Bob is out of town just now, I think. In fact, I'm quite sure he is. Out of town? But his friends did not say... And there's certainly nothing wrong with him. However, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you want to send him a note or a letter, you may drop it off here, and I'll see that it gets forwarded to the right place. Be glad to. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, why not just give us his address? Well, I don't know it, naturally. Just that he's away somewhere, that's all. Now, really, gentlemen, I'm very Mr. busy. Mr. Jackson, I... permit me to tell you that a young friend of Bobby's has made from you a liar. To me, he is swearing poor Bob Sprague with his coat turned up, sneaks into the Afton Hotel here in town every morning. Oh, get out of here. Well, how could that be? What is going on? Go someplace else. Call other people liars. Get out of here. <laughs> You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. 
Now back to Let George Do It and George Valentine. Well, Valentine's? Okay, sport, I'm in. What's the name of that hotel again? Gently, sweet after. Huh? What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I just say that to myself every time I have a glass of beer here at the hotel this time of morning. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm not insulted. Just sitting here, waiting for the first race at Hylia. Uh huh. Who's the bookie, bartender? Ah, uh, didn't you know? Well, I'm a little new here. Say, uh, your name's Bob Sprague, isn't it? Hey, wait a minute. I just asked, that's all. Look. What do you want? Now, listen, I never heard of you until one second ago. I asked you the same question a guy down the bar asked me about you, that's all. What? Sit down, sit down. He's looking at us. Oh. What's the matter, anyway? You must be popular or something. No sooner had I walked in this place than this guy walked up and asked if I knew you. Then he asked the bartender. The bartender looked at you, but then looked away quick and said no. Bartender's a nice guy. Well, I, I thought maybe I could help with something. You see, well, I mean, well, well, well. Hello, fellas. You mind if I join you? Uh, sorry, private club. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes, doesn't it? Man doesn't make new friends without getting blackballed once or twice. What's your problem? There, now there's what's wrong with the world. People don't say what's your happiness, they say what's the matter. Here, here you're going to have one with me now, both of you. Hey, bartender, say, either one of you fellas just happen to know a fellow named uh, Bob Sprague. Now, what's going on in this town? You asked me that just about two minutes ago. Oh, <laughs> so I did. My mistake. But that's the way it goes, isn't it? No, no, it's on me, Barkley. Here, kid. What? My key. I got a room upstairs. Hey, you, uh, whatever your name is. Al. Name's Al. Didn't I tell you? No. And you didn't ask me if I was Bob Sprague, either. Oh, look, I'm getting out of here. Thanks, Bob. Sure, see you later. Hey, now, wait a minute, both of you. You mean you're old Bob? Sure, sure, why not? Me, not him. But my mother called me Robert. <laughs> well, holy smoke. Think of that. Uh-huh. So what do you want with me? Just get out of my way, that's all, buddy. But I thought you wanted to see me. It's too early for games. Where's that guy going? Oh, I don't see anybody. You're no more spray than I am. Get off my toes. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Get out of my way. Hey, hey, wait a minute. No offense. If you want to know where the kid's going, just ask. Why, sure. I don't mind telling you. I got a room upstairs. Kid's meeting me there, 612. I just slipped in the key. Huh. What kind of a sucker do you think I am? So he's headed for the street, huh? Thanks for nothing. (laughs) Don't mention it. Sucker. Hey. Hey, kid. Bob. Oh, hi. Get rid of him? Yeah, push over him. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Who is he? Called himself Al, but he didn't... I don't know. I've never even seen him before. Just another strong man, I suppose. Brother, you're sure popular. Now, look, let's have it. What are you afraid of? What are you hiding from? (laughs) $40,000. What? Hey, look, I don't get it. Well, come on, come on. You're in trouble. Dodging somebody like mad. Your friend's all covering up for you. Ah, sure. Don't know why I shouldn't tell you. You see, it's like this. I... Well, go on. Somebody outside. Well, hello, everybody. What in the name of... So you have got him at last. George Valentine's, you are a genius. I might have known. There was no baggage in the room or anything. Look, get out of my way. Bob, wait. Bobby, my boy, my old so friend. So long, fat so Kid, wait. What's the idea? You, you... lousy double crosser. Wait. Stop him, Valentine. Oh, no. Let him go. But he's in trouble. He will get away. Get him. Yeah. There we are. That's better. Valentine's, what has come over you? Why did you hurt me? Oh, shut up, Acropolis. Find Bob Sprague. He's in danger. He's hiding from someone. Oh, brother, what a sap I am. The guy he's hiding from is you. Please, please, don't look at me like that. I am an innocent man. Sure, sure. Hiring people right and left to go after the poor guy. But I promised you a God, didn't I? Oh, yeah, sure. Percentage, cost, plus, straight commission of the goods. Why didn't I catch on earlier? $40,000. What is it you're trying to do? Shake him down? No, 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 please. I am honest. We are friends, Bobby and me. We, we spend many happy evenings together at, at, at poker. He lost. Ah, so that's it. A nice kid welching on a gambling debt, and you're the gambler. Valentine's, once in a while to be a gambler is a tragic thing. The government says you must pay income tax, but the laws will not let you collect your debts. 
And when your debtors run away oh, from you... Oh, my heart's bleeding for you. But, no, wait. This boy is good for it. His uncle is rich. So you want to meet a strong arm for you, huh? But only for a cut. Okay, so here goes. No! Yeah! I guess that deals me out, doesn't it? George, where on earth have you been? Ah, getting a bad taste out of my mouth. What? Yeah. Well, there's a movie on down and the street. And what did you do with Mr. Acropolis? It's been hours since you two left. Oh, skip it, skip it. I'm all through with that. What's the matter? The police just phoned. I've been trying to reach you. The police? They want you out at the house of Bob Sprague's uncle. That's where the other phone call came. Which phone call? The one from the man who said he'd kidnapped Bob Sprague. What? And unless his uncle paid $40,000, Bob would be murdered. Oh, that does it. Do I care? Angel, I dealt myself out of that three-ring circus once. George, I'm not... listen. The butler who took the call said the man tried to disguise his voice, but he did give his name. Ambrose Acropolis? No. George Valentine. <laughs> listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. And now, back to George Valentine. Deal me out. Only if your name is George Valentine, you always seem to get dealt right back in. A man named Ambrose Acropolis asked you to help him find a friend named Bob Sprague. And it wasn't until after you found him that you realized why. Acropolis is a gambler trying to collect what he calls an honest debt. The only trouble is now someone has collected Sprague himself. Yes, he's been kidnapped. By whom? Someone calling himself George Valentine's. Ambrose Acropolis. He's using my name, and he's the one you want. No, we just put out an alarm and find him, and it's all over. Simple like that. Well, why not, Johnson? What's wrong with that? You haven't met the uncle yet. Here. In here. Bob Sprague's uncle, the guy with the dough? He certainly has a fancy house. Well, what's wrong with him? You'll see. Mind if we come in? Lieutenant Johnson, come around here. Come around here. Well, I noticed you there on the patio. Wait, wait. How do you like this, eh? The butler just brought in the package. First one I ever owned in my life. Well, where's the yacht? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dougal, this is Miss Brooks, Mr. Valentine. Hello. Pleasure, pleasure indeed. Hi. Can't own the costume without the yacht, eh? It's a very becoming cap. Oh, now you know it isn't, but thanks. That's what I'm hoping my wife will say. Your wife? Wife-to-be. Getting married in a few days. Why not? You think I'm too old, I suppose. Well, of course I am, but there's no... Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Dougal. What is all this? You're Bob Sprague's uncle, aren't you? Huh? Not my fault. Well, aren't we here to find out about this kidnapping message you received? I'm afraid that's a problem for the police, not for me. What's that? See what I told you, Valentine? Now, why don't we all sit down and have a drink? In other words, you're not even worried? Is that right? Only, what kind of a message did they give you? My uh, butler took it over the phone. The voice said somebody had better show up at a certain address with 40000 in cash. The lieutenant's got all that. Well? Otherwise, they'd kill Bob. (laughs) Yes, that's right. Now, sit down. We'll all have that drink. Well, uh, what's so funny? Oh, Bob's been in scrapes all his life, just like his father. And I've been silly enough to keep hauling him out. Keep pulling him off the railroad tracks before the trains cut him in two. Uh Uh-huh. Obviously, you don't like your nephew very much. Don't like him? I hate him. He's a blasted nuisance. Gambling all the time. And I've finally grown up enough to realize that I owe him nothing. Peace is wonderful. And so you won't pay the 40000 that they ask? Look, I'm going to be married. I'm going to have a wife. I'm going to buy a yacht. And as far as I'm concerned, Bob can save himself from the buzzsaw. I'm not going to. Okay, then. Neither am I. But you will, won't you, Lieutenant? That's your job. (laughs) Play it safe. We'll need money. Acropolis isn't going to sucker for any cut-up newspapers. Well, then take up a collection. Pass the hat. (laughs) Or maybe you should just sit out this hand. They won't kill him. What good would it do them? See what I mean? Forget it. Have a good time. Let's everybody just deal ourselves out. Well, 
Clementine Dougal's right. I've got a job to do. Oh, his uncle can't mean those things he said, Lieutenant. I don't care if he does, Angel. It's Acropolis I want to find. Sure. Who likes to be made a sucker? Think how this is going to look in the newspaper. George Valentine's. Kidnapper or Pat? Yeah, sure. Sergeant, have any luck tracing our fat friend? Uh-uh. Says they picked up about ten trails on Acropolis, but none of them... No, 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 no. I'll get that. Oh, no? Yeah, that's right. What? You did. Who did what? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Sure, sure, right away. He's dead. Huh? Bob Sprague? Oh, no. Wrong guess. Acropolis. Where'd they find him? No, no, no. That was a lawyer Jackson just called. Well, don't just stand there. Dougal, I mean. Dougal's dead. Two shots, huh? Yeah. After Dougal put up a pretty good fight. Somebody came in through the patio just the same way we did, I guess. And all this poor guy could think of was about getting married and buying a yacht. Yeah. Makes no sense. Uh-uh, Johnson. There's a perfectly simple reason for this guy being killed, and it ties right in with the rest of it, too. Mr. Jackson. Oh, Sergeant, has the lawyer... Uh... Yes, 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 right here. May I see you a second, please? Well, it isn't the inquisitive young man. Ah, uh, sure, we've met before. Now, I want $40,000. You... I beg your pardon. Well, Dougal's dead, so his money can't be his anymore. And if it wasn't married yet, I suppose his nephew still gets it, check. Well, yes, Bob Sprague inherits, but and I Bob don't see is it. being held prisoner somewhere for forty thousand yeah, dollars. But it's ridiculous to pay that. Dougal called me earlier and asked my opinion. I told him the same thing. That's what I was coming out here to talk about when I found him. Bob has been in these scrapes too often before. You also think we ought to just let Bob be killed? Well, but they wouldn't do that. It's ridiculous. They wouldn't dare to. Uh, well. Yeah, yeah, somebody killed Dougal fast enough. Now, look, there's no time to waste. I want 40000 in cash. Just give me those instructions on how and where I pay the money, Johnson. You, George? Sure, sure, here I go again, drawing another hand. Because you see, Mr. Jackson, this is the only way we can find out who's holding the kid. It's also the only way we can find out who murdered his uncle. <laughs> George, that's the address, but the place looks so empty. Just stay out of sight, Angel, and see if I bounce out. If I do, then you'll know it's not. But you don't expect to see anyone. You're, you're just supposed to leave the money here. Yeah, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but it won't work with a lot of police watching. I know that. Oh, George, wait a minute. So long, Angel. Hmm. Anybody home? All right, where do you want the money? What do I do? Just drop it on the floor and then... No, you don't. Your aim's bad, Buster. Drop that blackjack. Yeah, that's better. You think I'd walk in here without a gun? Don't shoot again. You heard me and Bob Sprague will be killed. Hey, where have I heard you before? Let's get a little light on this mausoleum. Well, the laughing boy at the Afton Bar. Al, isn't it? No, don't that beat all. It's a small world, ain't it? Who are you working for? You got the gun, but I got the boy. Let's not waste time. All right, all right. Want to count the cash? Oh, me? Oh, no. Who wants to count money? Oh, it's all there, all right. <laughs> oh, boy. Why work for a living, huh, pal? Five, six, seven, thirty, thirty-five, forty. Now, there's a head of lettuce. I didn't even know they made them that big. Not so fast, Buster. It goes back in the envelope and I keep it. Well, now, look. We got to go through that again. I keep it until you show me the kid. Unharmed. Can't be done. Put up an awful fight. He's got an awful black eye. All right, all right. Don't get anxious. But you know what'll happen if you try anything fancy. Sure. You'll get shot. Now, don't be like that. After all, this isn't a regular kidnapping. A debt's a debt, that's all. Come on, my car's outside. After you. No, no, no thanks. Have it your own way. But I told you I'd bring you down here. There's nothing to be suspicious about. Drop the gun. Hmm? Okay. Regular parade, isn't it? Sure. You're going to play bass horn. Take it easy. Or should we see if he makes noises like a cymbal? Cut it out, cut it out. No, no, leave him alone. I'll take the gun. 
Nice. Where'd you get the gorilla boy, Al? Relax, I tell you. You're a monk friend. Then stop picking my pocket. Debt's a debt, that's all. There we are, 40 G. Okay, where's the kid? I suppose he's nowhere here than he That's was the... the trouble with everybody nowadays. No good faith. You see what I mean? Let him out, Louis. Huh, what? Oh, boss, he's a good boy and cause no trouble. Your place lousy poker, though. All right, dopey, wake up. Uh, what do you want? Oh, that's you again. Hello, kid. I wasn't sure I'd point you. Play hearts and flowers. Now, look, this time I'm legitimate. I'm from your uncle. Oh, try again. Will you? I'd rather be locked up. We're going to turn you loose, playboy. Matinee's over. Wait a minute. You mean that old skin flint threw away his fancy blonde, his yachting cap long enough to cough up? I don't believe it. Here's the dough. I still don't believe it. It's your dough, not your uncle's. What? Yeah. Mr. Dougal's dead. He's dead. Oh, now, look, he was... Come a... on, Louie. So long, son. Hey, come on back here. Stop it. Look out, kid. All right, let them go. They got their money. They're just hired hands. Look, what's it all about? What's been happening? Who hired them? Same guy who murdered your uncle. Valentine's. Tell Lieutenant Johnson how harmless, harmless I am. I... All right, I'll let go of you, but just be quiet. For Acropolis, I doubt if it's possible. But you are my friend. Valentine's, you are my friend. Did you check his voice on the telephone? Sure, I checked it. What's the matter, Johnson? Not him, huh? Me? Why should I phone to anybody? Why should I be involved with kidnapping? Shut up. So it wasn't him on the phone. What difference does it make? One of his hired hands spoke the piece, that's all. Okay, okay. I left Brooksy out here with Bob. Valentine's, come back here. Don't leave me in this pickle of stew, Valentine. Why not? It's all over. It's finished. What's that? Well, all except the hard work. But you've already got the lead, Lieutenant. Yeah, what's that? What lead? What are you talking about? Oh, hello, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Valentine Jackson here seems to think that Acropolis... Oh, sure, sure. Everybody's thinking, but skip it, will you? Now, why would Acropolis want my name used? Why would he hire me in the first place if he intended to stage a kidnapping? As I remember, he even tried to get a few other detectives to help him chase down Bob here. I'm a lawyer. I prefer to think logically, if you don't mind. Acropolis is the one the debt was owed to, isn't he? Sure, and that's how the murder ties in. Why, of course. He discovered that Dougal wasn't going to pay up, so he killed Dougal in order to make the boy able to pay. You went through it yourself. It worked. That's what happened. Are you all through? Okay, listen. Acropolis here is all noise. He blunders around so much he couldn't even collect his own debt. Be careful of the words, please. Sports, you hired me to find Bob Sprague. All right, I did. But all the fuss certainly provided a good opportunity for somebody else to blame this all on you. And that's why my name was used, to link it to you, Acropolis. Now, see here, that doesn't make any sense. But for some reason, I was called Valentine's. Yes, but that's the way he pronounced it. Yeah, and the simplest explanation for that extra S is that certain people today must have actually thought that was my name. Well, on the phone, it could have been Al or Louis or the uh, person who hired them. But it was the latter who only heard my name once, and in Acropolis's lovely voice. I don't get you. Oh, yes, you do, Bob. Up in that hotel room. He walked in and called me George Valentine's, and you must have thought that was my name. Now, see here. Well, what's the matter, Mr. Jackson? Don't you think it makes sense that Bob here should have taken advantage of his own predicament? To get his uncle's money before the old boy was married and cut him off? Look, I was a prisoner at the time of the murder. Oh, no, you weren't. Sure, Al put on a show for everybody in the hotel this morning. Who's Bob Sprague? Didn't know you. Big menace chasing you. You're crazy. And he carried through the act just fine. After all, why not? I suppose his cut is the 40000 he walked off with. But that's not true. He had me locked in a room. I don't know what he said, He didn't but make it... the mistake you did. And I don't just mean that Valentine's business either. Because I don't wear a yachting cap. What? Yeah. And neither did your uncle until today. He told us. Package just came before we saw him. After you'd been, quote, kidnapped, unquote. Okay, Johnson, it's all yours. Just get him to explain how he could mention that yachting cap to me when he'd never even seen it. Except, of course, while he was killing his uncle. Why, you dirty murderer. Sing it sweet, Buster. Sing it sweet. <laughs> Come on, Brooksy. But, George, Mr. Acropolis... No, no, here, but... we're not leaving him. Come on, gambler. Let's see what kind of cards we can deal. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment.
But 40000 Now I will never get my $40,000. Of course you won't. You can't collect it legally, and I certainly don't know how else you could get it from a man who's being tried for murder. You sound so sorry for me. There is an understatement. How many times must I explain to you my honesty? Oh, cut it out, sport. You're not bright, that's all. Maybe you beat Bob Sprague at cards, but he almost got even by hanging this whole mess on you. Valentine's, we will not speak of it anymore. The pleasure of this meeting has been yours. And for the last time, my name is not I'm Valentine. Sorry, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Please? Now we are friends. Of course. I will call you Georges. <laughs> Why, that's stupid, oh, George. Let him go. I think it's kind of cute. George is George. You have just heard Deal Me Out, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly, inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it.